What impact do you see pro gamers having on helping to grow the hobby of gaming even further into the mainstream? You know, it's interesting to have watched the transition of games being the nerd's hobby to it now being everyone's hobby, even amongst those people who don't admit they're gamers, but obviously are. Uh, for me, the transition, it's interesting. When I, you know, when I was young, those of us who were into computers were shunned, literally, in schools. Nerds were shunned in schools. And for me, this interesting change happened, and you're going to find this a silly way. Uh, if you remember the Disney animated movie 101 Dalmatians, the main male lead in that movie, his job was he was a starving writer trying to write a book, a novel, and get it published, and they were very you know, poor and down on the and so it was very difficult for him to take care of all the dogs. Then, you know, de you know, a couple decades later, they did a live action 101 Dalmatians. And that was maybe 15 years into the games industry. And the male lead character, his job was not to be a starving artist. He was a starving computer game designer. And of course, I immediately, as a game designer, I noticed that change in the script. And I was like, ah, my profession just became cool. Or now they've decided that my profession is cool. Disney believes that my profession is cool. I'm no longer the shy outcast. I'm now the hipster cool thing to be. And you begin to look around and go, wait a minute, our companies are no longer employing just computer nerds. You know, we've got the Republican yuppies running the business side of the business. You know, we've got the hippies doing the art. You know, we've got the nerds making the code. Uh, and then we've got some, you know, average Joes filling in, in between. And, uh, and I thought, wow, how far have we come to uh, now become, uh, become mainstream? And so you, you ask specifically about how is professional gaming going to, to continue that evolution? And I think there's no question that it's just, it's just, it's just another brick uh, on, in the step, another stepping stone on the journey uh, to where it normalizes it uh, to something that people, uh, you know, I think I've already gone a long way from uh, thinking is, you know, when I was younger, uh, role-playing games were considered devil worship. I mean, I literally had people would see ads for my games and write me letters about, you know, please stop converting all the children of America to devil worship. And, uh, and, you know, and that hasn't happened in you know, a couple of decades now. And, uh, and that's how we've gone from being outcasts to mainstream. Having designed many games, what type of respect do you have for someone who can play StarCraft II competitively? <laughs> you know, StarCraft is, I think, probably the quintessential uh, professional gamers game. And, uh, uh, you know, what I, what I find funny about StarCraft is how long it has been sustained by professional gaming. Um, you know, uh, and again, uh, I, I mentioned this uh, event that I went to in Korea, and it was based around StarCraft. StarCraft was the number one game they were playing there competitively. And, uh, uh, and so, uh, you know, as a person who's played, you know, of that lineage, uh, you know, it's really the Warcraft was really the start of that one, and I would even go to Command and Conquer before that. Uh, but uh, uh, but I think there's just it's really a testimony to the game play style that it, it has survived that long. And my my kind of anecdotal understanding goes something like this. So you know when uh, uh, the original Command and Conquer I'll use as my case study that was the first RTS that I played to, you know endlessly, and and so I played it by myself at first and you know, loved it, thought I was really good at it. Decided to play our CFO who also was uh, a big player of it. So me and Mike Grajeda we would be, be each other's opponents. And you know, he would be the first person to learn how to use engineers to sneak back and take over my base. And so then I developed a strategy to defeat that. And then he developed a strategy to beat that. And we went back and forth over about four months. We would play you know, many times each day. We got better and better and better and better. We thought we rocked. And then we said, you know, let's, let's expand our horizons. Let's go play somebody from our QA staff. So we turned around and we started to play one person from QA. We were obliterated instantly. And I was like, how is it possible that I thought I was so good? And in fact, these people, can, these, anybody else can just walk over me. And I began to like open up and try to play anybody in the outside real world, just walk right over me. And I realized, wow, I've put hundreds of hours into this thing and I'm still no good. And, uh, uh, and that's actually was sort of the end of my playing of RTSs at that level, just because I realized I'd put a bunch of time into it and I, wasn't, I was never going to get there uh, from a, really, a truly externally competitive uh, uh, standpoint. And so my respect for people who do play at these very, very high levels of competition and my understanding for the uh, multitasking that has to be done that I think you have to be half my age to have the chance of doing, apparently have the chance of doing, uh, that uh, you know, my hat's off to them 
uh, you know, they are clearly the masters. How has going to space impacted the directions you're taking in gaming today? You know, it's fascinating that um, since my little off-planet uh, journey, uh, I've reflected a lot on you know, how do I internalize that and how will it affect uh, my game creation. And there's no question that as an individual, my life is quite a bit different post space life than before. For example, I'm now married with children, which I'd never considered before. I now live a much more environmentalist lifestyle than I ever did before. I've sold all my gas guzzling cars. I live much more in tune with nature as inspired by my trip to space. Uh, but also, you know, my trip to space uh, it was punctuated with something that you, a video was actually recently released uh, called the overview effect about how truly transformative it is to look out the window of a spacecraft and watch the earth over a period of days. Uh, and, you know, and, and it's not, but it's not my first exotic travel. You know, I've been down to the Titanic and other deep sea targets have been traveling in Antarctica and things of this nature. And uh, uh, the, uh, those, the joy I get, the learning I get from those explorations really does feed back into my work, but it's very tangential. It's not like, hey, I've ridden rockets, now I'm gonna make a control panel of a rocket and show people how cool it was to flip switches in a rocket. Rather, it's to show people you know, there is a joy of discovery. There's a way these things unfold before your eyes that I want to try to recreate in games. So, uh, in fact, if you look at the stories I tell in Ultimas, they're usually modern social commentary about the ills of the Earth today, but cast into uh, the fantasy setting. And so I think that uh, uh, there's no question uh, that uh, my trip ins will inspire a lot of the details of my craft. It just won't be very obvious to most of the people who see it.